Hi, and welcome to another episode of About the Authors TV. I'm your host, Jake Brown. When Oprah Winfrey promises that parents you will be wowed and awed by Dr. Shefali, they listen. And after appearing seven times on Winfrey's hit TV show, Super Soul Sunday, and her life class television programs, along with specializing as an expert in family dynamics and personal development, she teaches courses around the world with a unique approach that fuses Western psychology and Eastern philosophy into bestsellers like The Conscious Parent, Transforming Ourselves, Empowering Our Children, A Radical Awakening, Turn Your Pain Into Power, Embrace Your Truth and Live Free, The Awakened Family, A Revolution in Parenting, Out of Control, Why Disciplining Your Child Doesn't Work and What Will, Superpowered, Transforming Anxiety into Courage, Confidence and Resilience, and most recently, The Parenting Map, Step-by-Step -step Solutions to Consciously Create the Ultimate Parent-Child Relationship. And with a real doctor in the house, we're excited to welcome her to the show. Dr. Shafali, thanks so much for being here. Long before you began writing books, how early do you first remember falling in love with reading them? You know, we were all readers, early readers, consistent readers. So I think the love for reading was definitely in my blood. But more than reading, I think for writers, it is about expressing ourselves through words, right? So words have always captivated me in storytelling. So my medium of expression is typically to write. Did you begin to find your voice, so to speak, as a writer while earning your PhD at Columbia University in clinical psychology? A little bit later in life, maybe in my early 20s, where I really found myself, I didn't know I had a talent or a proclivity. I just liked it, but I never took it seriously till my early 20s. My greatest teachers were writers. You know, they were people who wrote books that inspired me. So Eckhart Tolle, Pema Children. These were the books that moved me and, you know, lit something up. So, of course, uh, you know, they they were the inspirations behind it. And I think, you know, now the, the, the medium is changing. It's no longer so much books. But when we were growing up, when we wanted to learn from somebody wise, it would be through a book. So, you know, I always thought that, okay, that's how I will spread my message as well. You know, now it's changing. Now it's all video and edited and so different. But back then it was books. Please share a bit with viewers about how this incredible background in education began to translate into the fusion of Western psychology and Eastern philosophy that you then began to practice in the field with families and as a parent yourself, eventually putting those ideas down on the page. My degree was in psychology, so I did many masters, did a PhD. And I also, at the, that same time uh, in my 20s, was exposed to Buddhism and meditation. So I began to integrate the teachings of meditation with psychology and merge them uh, in my practice. And I found that this East meets West approach was really helpful for people. Uh, the West is all about, you know, uncovering your childhood and figuring out your childhood patterns. And the East is more about, okay, now you have those patterns, but how do you live in the present moment? So I, I blend both approaches in my work and in my writing. I think, yes, my, my experience with my clients, you know, taking down their notes, understanding their issues every single day, you know, seeing my notes over and over again, saying the same things. And then my own experience as a mom really opened me up to, okay, now this is something that is significant. What I'm, what I'm seeing is something that's repeating itself. And now it, it has repeated itself in my own parenting. And that's what I began writing about, you know. I think until it hit me in my house, I didn't really get it so clearly. But, uh, but all my work is based on my clients, my hours with my clients, as well as my own personal experience as a mother. The Conscious Parent, Transforming Ourselves and Empowering Our Children was the result of that writing. It really began to make a difference in the lives of its readers once it hit shelves, eventually making so much progress within those readers' lives that Oprah Winfrey took note and began featuring you as a guest on her Super Soul Sunday series. Were you, as you watched this new philosophy of yours, take on the dimensions it did as an actual toolkit that parents were actually using to great success and effect in their own families' lives? I wrote one book, which was only published in India. It's it's called It's a Mom. Then I wrote The Conscious Parent. Well, so I broke through with this new model of parenting called Conscious Parenting, which is very different than the parenting we were raised in, which is traditional parenting. So I kind of created a new paradigm for parents. The old paradigm was based on 
fear and shame and control. And this paradigm, the conscious paradigm, is based more on connection, attunement, empowerment, and uh, really creating a strong relationship with our children. The other one was about the parents being in control. This one is about the parents being in connection. So it's a big paradigm shift. And, and I, I was one of the first authors to really challenge parents to parent themselves, to look at themselves, to look at their own issues before they were raising their children. It's a big ask, isn't it, for parents to open their minds to making that sort of shift, especially against the backdrop and maybe backbone of the traditions they were raised with that they might naturally feel drawn to incorporate into their own style of child rearing. Was there a trial and error process that you worked through in the workshops and private sessions with your patients? And message before you finally felt the book was ready to place in the lives of readers? Uh, you know, both. It takes time, but you also have flushed it out. And uh, editing is always the longest phase. You know, you can write a book, but then it has to be edited. Um, so, but as I've become a writer more and more, uh, the writing phase becomes quicker and quicker. You know, now you kind of know how to write. In the first uh, first book I wrote, you know, I don't know, 400,000 words, and then it came down to 100,000, right? I think it was like 20% mine and 30% other people and 50% didactic. You know, 50% was colored by stories. So it was, you know, 20% of my own life. I don't like to talk too much about my life, but you must talk a little bit to make it relatable. You want people to feel like I'm a human being on the other side. And so people don't feel judged or shamed. So I, I try to keep a good mix uh, between my life and other people. Well, I was just getting my feet wet. It was validating um, and then just got me more passionate about writing more and more and and then I wrote, like you said, The Conscious Parent. And that book was seminal. It was uh, it was breaking ground in a new paradigm. People had not heard of conscious parenting before that. So that was a big breakthrough book. Take us through a bit of what that experience was like, if you would, of watching your work and words resonate so roundly with readers. With readers, this buzz built organically over time. Well, it took a long time. You know, it took a long time. So I didn't really feel it. But now I feel it after 13 years. Now I can see that conscious parenting is a movement. It's a thing. And I was one of the first to spearhead it. So now I get to see the benefit. But back then it was so slow and incremental that it was almost negligible. It was so slow, so slow. I didn't go on any talk show. I didn't have any publicity. It came out like a whisper. And then many years later, uh, it was picked up by Oprah for her Super Soul Sunday. That's when it blew up. But till then, it was just 10 parents a year, I would say, like really slow um, because I didn't hire anybody. I didn't didn't uh, put myself out there. I just let the book organically get to gain speed. But, you know, that's just the way I did it. I, I didn't hire a big team or anything. Now, once Oprah Winfrey began championing your message and spotlighting your work more prominently, she promised readers within the pages of The Awakened Family, a revolution in parenting, that they'd be both wowed and awed. How pivotal was her embrace of your new parenting approach to its breakthrough? Well, she's amazing and she does make it easy and she's phenomenal. I mean, I could not say enough things about her. And it was such an honor. I couldn't believe it. I was, I it was, a, you know, I couldn't believe it. And I, I've been invited many times, seven times in all. I could not believe it. I still can't believe it. And uh, it was my dream come true. And uh, I was very lucky, very honored, very privileged to get that. Well, she used to showcase the best thinkers of our time on Super Soul Sunday. So you want to be on that show. It's the ultimate show. It's getting the ultimate respect and recognition from the ultimate human out there, the public figure of them all. But I don't think she does them anymore. But uh, at that time, it was a huge thing to be able to be on Oprah Super Soul and to have that audience with her. Well, I think she sees the potential of this message. She knows it's different. She knows it's brave. She knows it's revolutionary. And that's why she endorsed it. You know, she just gave me another endorsement on, on Instagram where she said that she believes in this so much. And I'm so grateful because even though she's not a mom, she understands this better than parents do. So I just acknowledge her so deeply. She's really the one who's allowed my work to be out there in the world. What new expertise and experience did you weave into your next book on the subject that you were excited to feature here? That book just took the first book much deeper and much clearer. 
And each book kind of gives a different aspect. So I think the Awakened Family just took all the principles of the conscious parent and get, made it richer, made it more clear. Uh, I became very aware of more things that I wanted to write about. So I really enjoyed writing The Awakened Family. I, I write books based on what I am moved by and inspired by. If I'm not inspired and it's a great idea, but if I'm not inspired, I will not do it. So I wrote a radical awakening based on my own life and my own awakening going through a particular difficult transition in my life. And so that's what inspired me. That's what flowed. And that book actually did very, very, very well. Uh, it just uh, was during the pandemic. So it went under the radar, but that was a bestseller as well. So um, yeah, I just write based on my own personal experiences and what really moves me in the present moment. I don't have a, a very, you know, well-oiled machine around what I write. I just write from my heart because I know when I believe in something, that's what I will sell it with, you know, and selling the book is harder than writing the book. Putting it out there is much harder. So that's what I always focus on. Yeah, do I love this topic enough that it will hold me through the whole launch and the selling process of it? And what have you found that you most enjoy and maybe even dislike about selling a new book to the public in the 2020s? I like connecting to people. I like sharing my message. What I don't like is that you have to do it a lot, right? That you have to really... People are distracted these days. It's so noisy out there. So to get your voice heard, it takes so much effort. And this is coming from me and I have a platform. So I can only imagine for other authors how hard it is. Uh, but it's lovely to be given a platform to share your work. That's something I don't take for granted. It's just tiring because you're competing with so many other messages out there. And the often purer the message, and, and my message is provocative and pure, it's hard for people to hear. So, you know, I'm trying to change paradigms. So I'm not just, you know, giving motivational talks or easy wheezy talks. I'm really provoking people. And that often is challenging for people. Where do you feel like you found that balance between provocative and pure? It's provocative because I'm challenging parents to look at themselves and no parent wants to look at themselves. They think they're the best and then they're never wrong. And what's pure about it is that it's it's consistently true. Whatever I say, it's not going to be current or out of current. It's always going to be true because it's based on human nature, what I'm talking about. Nothing I'm saying is a lie. Uh, so it's very pure in that way. But I think because it's provocative, I get a lot of resistance. Do you challenge parents when they raise their hands during a talk about, during talks to ask about a solution to a problem that they may be having with a child at home? all the time if I'm doing a longer talk or a workshop talk or conference which has many hours I'll do role plays with people right there and then I have to imagine that gives you great material for future books sure sure you know I, I have a full-time practice almost so I keep my feet on the ground you know many people who write often are not practicing right so I like to practice because it gives me information gives me insight makes me refine my skills, make me, makes me go deeper. Um, so it's very important to keep your feet on the ground and practice what you're preaching. Getting children to listen is one of a parent's most common challenges throughout childhood at different stages. When you braved into the writing of Out of Control, why disciplining your child doesn't work and what will? Would you make viewers your students for a minute and share a bit about what you found within your research and writing that makes this new out-of-the-box thinking worth applying in practice to getting that part of raising a child under better control? Now, you know, then you can, then I had another book, which was just on discipline, which it was just one aspect of parenting. You have to take the most common scenarios of parenting, you know, disrespect, the child is not, you know, following your rules, the child is... Uh, addicted to screens, the child is unmotivated or wants to quit. You know, what are the common things that parents experience? And I just go with the common ones because you can't solve every problem. My work is about creating the right mindset and the right approach. If you have the right approach and you apply the principles, it doesn't matter what the scene is, it's the same principles. So what I teach is, you know, how do you build a muscle to become a conscious parent so it becomes a muscle that you use over and over again 
and you're not floundering each time. Okay, what technique do I use this time? What strategy do I use that time? You kind of just build on yourself and you're capable of parenting yourself to any difficult situation because you know the principles. So I teach the principles and then I also give strategy, but you simply cannot cover every single case scenario. With your latest The Parenting Map, step-by-step -step solutions to consciously create the ultimate parent-child relationship, we've talked thoroughly about mom and dad. What has the reaction been like from kids who've been, after all, the beneficiaries in this new approach to parenting? So the kids really understand the power of this message. I don't know about the men and the spouses so much, but uh, this, you know, children understand that these words are true. I, I don't say anything here that anyone can dispute. The only reason people would dispute it is because it's provocative and uh, they want to resist it because I'm forcing parents to go within themselves. But nothing in here is a word untrue. And then this book right now, uh, the parenting map is the how. So the other books were the what and the why, and now this book is the how. I, I felt like it was time to write this book because people had been asking me for the how to, and I had not been doing it. So finally, I put my pen to paper and just gave it to them. Um, it's really a very tangible, practical, solution-oriented guide. And it takes parents very methodically down the steps to come to the other side, more awakened, more enlightened. In writing your latest, how has the process changed after being an author for 10 years? Now I will just write about 100,000. Now I know how to write a book. I didn't know how to write a book in my first books. So it takes practice, but now I can say I know how to write a book, you know, and it'll come out pretty clearly and concisely right from the start. Do you envision writing more books on the subject of parenting? I think this is my last parenting book, though, um, four books on the topic. But, you know, each, each one builds on the other and fills in the missing pieces. And uh, hopefully each one resonates with people in a different way. Right now, it's just the focus is on this book. I'll spend another year just touring this and, and putting it out there, do it justice, then probably take a break for a year or two. So you want I want to have space now before I start the next project. Now, there's a lot of aspiring authors trying to crack into this specific genre with their own book. What kind of advice do you give to those who ask you, that ask you what work to reach such great successes? Well, I think, you know, you have to first know what your hook is, right? What is your, what is the whole book based on? You start with the center. What is the biggest theme? And then you have different things that talk to that theme, but everything has to come back to that. And then you have to kind of know your audience, of course. But then, you know, I, I like to structure it. And I always start with a very clear structure and then I just plug it in. So till I don't get the structure, I may do a lot of free form to get the structure, but my goal is first to get a structure. I need to see it laid out. And then I just, I go in this section, I'm gonna write these three points, this section, these three points. And what stories go with this? And I try to outline it all. And then I free flow within it again. So free flow to get to structure, get the structure, and then you free flow again, then you edit it down, right? I, I try to edit as I go along. So I'll write a chapter, then I'll go back, edit it, edit it again, then I'll go to the next chapter. So I'll do two, three edits myself each time, but then also at the end, you have to do another edit. So, you, you know, I don't look at editing as separate from my writing. I look at it as a part and par parcel, even though it's annoying, but it's necessary because you need distance from your writing. You cannot expect it all to come out perfectly in one shot. You need distance, then you come back and then you, you give it some greater clarity inside. So I think distance is very important to give yourself time. So you write chapter one, then you write chapter seven, then you go back to chapter one again. And now you've had distance, you've had perspective. So you have to allow this creative process. It takes five, six months minimum, you know, but you need to give yourself the space to have your creativity come out. I have never, but I give it to, you know, one or two people that I trust who will read it and tell me, is it flowing? But, you know, by this stage of having written so many books, I, the main thing you have to get across as, a, as an author is the tone. If your tone is correct, you're going to flow. So you need to strike the tone. And sometimes that takes time to get the right tone. You may be too distant. You may be too uh, laborious. You may be too old fashioned, too old. You want to be on trend and talking to the person. So 
you, that's the tone you want to get, right? That the person feels you're talking to them, not at them, not down to them. So that's the hardest thing sometimes is to get the tone. Finally, what's proven to be most rewarding about seeing the impact that your work is having in the lives of your families or readers? Yeah, it's an incredible feeling, you know? It's like shocking. It's uh, humbling, shocking. I'm so grateful. I'm so lucky. I can't even believe it. You know, it's, it's, if one person changed their life, I'd be in shock. But thousands have told me that they've changed their lives. So it's very humbling, really, is the word. Dr. Shafali, it has been absolutely fascinating talking today. Thank you so much for taking out time to be on About the Authors TV. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.